Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome again to Weekly Inspiration, where the portion of the week is uh, Vayeshev. And the story of Vayeshev, I mean, just Vayeshev being to sit down or to settle down. And the idea is, we know Yaakov went to problem from the moment he was born. And, uh, you know, after so many negative things that happened in his life, it's time to settle down. So Vayeshev means to settle down. And the commentary say, as he's about to settle down, you know, Yosef get kidnapped by the brother being sold to the Ishmaelim, to the Ismailis, and from there to Egypt as a slave. He doesn't know about it because they tell him that he was killed by an animal. So just think about it, just in the moment to settle down. So for that reason, commentary say, you know, when, when you, exactly in the moment that you feel things are getting relaxed and everything is just fine, you know, make sure you'll be, you'll be on board, you'll be aware of what's truly going on uh, around you because we have to be strong against that evil inclination. But going back to the story, let me maybe share with you the part of the story. Uh, Yosef is being more likable, you know, by his brother, uh, for more than his brother, by his father. Uh, his brother actually don't like the fact that the father like him and he give him a special robe uh, stripe board and of course it's a code pasim you know in the word pasim you have all the future thing that yourself uh, will have to go there like uh, pasim you know uh, uh, potifar is in the word pasir yud is ishmaeli bechule bechule mitzrayim and uh, the whole idea here that Yaakov want to show love to his son of course the question is why you have to show the love to your son and make the other brother jealous but we are talking about their family that were spiritual level beyond anything we can understand. Uh, Yosef is basically getting to, I don't want to call it lack of unity, but he's talking about himself and the dream that it seems is, is the guy, the chosen, the only one. And because of that, uh, once the, the brothers see that he's speaking bad about the the concubines uh, children which is basically stepbrothers they realize something is wrong with that brother they make a conscious decision to sell him uh, they want to kill him first then change their mind to sell him and tell jacob that basically he was killed now of course that devastating news that they arrive to jacob make jacob lose his prophecy because a human who is not happy cannot prophesy anymore, cannot have a wach kodesh, cannot cannot see anything anymore. And of course, we see right after the, they sold their own brother, which is very much forbidden. Every day, every one of the brothers start to fall down, you know, step by step, they're, they're falling apart. And Joseph, actually, the other end in Egypt, start to become successful. He's been tempted, and he's overcome his temptation. He's thrown to prison, and we hope for better news for everybody, but it doesn't happen, um, you know, uh, right away. Uh, it just, uh, that's what this week Parsha is all about. And the question is, what can we get from it? Okay, that's, let's jump into the idea. Now I would like to share with you a concept. I mean, just think about it. Can you imagine if you read about Joseph without knowing the whole story? You would judge Joseph to be an evil man, a wicked man. Because here we go, a guy who just talk about himself. I saw in my dream that I'm the rulers. I saw another dream that I'm the rulers. His father and mother telling him, shame on you. You want us to be your slave. And then he continue. He never stop. And he continue again. And then he speak bad about the brother to the father. He snitch on them. And then he talk bad about the, the, the concubine's children. From that, you can look at it and say to yourself, oh, not sure I'm into that guy. When you read the old portion, let's say you're going to read this portion, next week portion, the portion after, all of a sudden we call him Joseph Atzadik, the righteous. But if you read just this portion, just a little bit half of this portion, yes, he suffered, yes, the anger with him, but we will think about that Joseph as a wicked man, as a Rasha, and why am I sharing with you that Twisted idea, maybe I should call it. I mean, it's a wrong idea I have to share it with you. Why well, I have to open your mind into that? The point is like that, that a lot of time in life, you know, a human being, 
who's overly judging and too reactive into the situation at, that they're going through in the moment, uh, a lot of time run into the wrong conclusion. And the reason we run into the wrong conclusion because we get too reactive into the current situation. For example, if you're going through a rough pattern, if you're going through a rough relationship, and I will tell you that two months from now, your relationship will be excellent. Those six a day, those six weeks or eight weeks or whatever weeks you're going through, the difficulty is not as bad because you know eventually it's going to be okay. But when you are into the negativity as you're going through that, then unfortunately that negativity can take two or three years. Because what makes negative into positive? Your awareness, your consciousness, your idea that you know it's going to be okay. But in the moment that you react into a situation and you are absolutely sure it's never going to be okay, then that situation changed the title, the direction of where it's going. So we are capable actually to change the news of what's coming by reacting right into the current situation. The question is, how this week you and me will be able to use different tools that Kabbalah, Rabbi Isaac Luria, and of course Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai in the Zohar offered to us to get into places where the current situation will not affect us in a way that we basically will take the old direction of our life on the wrong direction, God forbid. And this is what we have to learn. What influences our mind? Why we are not capable not to react to a negative situation? Why we are not capable a lot of time, you know, to, to go above that, above, just above this reaction and say to myself, wait a minute, this is only a 30 days period, a problem. You ever look at a woman when she goes to give birth? This is unbelievable. Women who give birth to more than one time, painful. It's a headache. Nine months. Can you imagine men have to give birth? And after the first experience, they die. Women, after the first experience, they want it again. And you look at them like, you sure? What happened? I mean, what happened? They know the result after that. The result, they have another member of the family. They are the result for adding another member to their own family. Yes, it's nine months. It's painful. It's not comfortable the whole nine yard. But in the end, nobody beside the woman can add another member to your family. How important is that to create another human being? So, but if you tell the woman, hey, listen, there's so much pain, giving birth, so much pain, being pregnant, it's not comfortable, you're going to eat a lot, and you might gain weight after you give birth, no good. The women will think twice. So if you tell the story in the middle and you stop the story in the middle and you don't tell a story of 20 years, everything you do look bad. How is that to relate to our parasha and how is it to relate to that, what the Zohar is teaching us? So I'm going to jump right into the Zohar in the beginning of the Sulam, right in the beginning. That's how the Sulam start. That's how the Zohar start this week, parasha. In the beginning, first verse of the Zohar in this parasha, Start like this. And I'm relating it exactly that how we jump into conclusion and why we jump into conclusion. I think we all want to know what is the force that make me jump into conclusion before I even know what's going on. But before that, nothing like my wife T. Amazing. So it's like this. Vayeshev. Vayeshev Yaakov Beretz Megure Aviv. I'm reading from the first verse of the Zohar by Yeshev. Rabbi Chia Patach Vamar. Rabot Raot Tzadik, Mekulam Yatsin Hashem. How great are the suffering, the chaos, the problem that a righteous man have to go through, but from everything, God will save him. And I'm sure later on you're going to hear Debbie reading it for you, so to be more clear, but I want to emphasize on that Pasuk. And Jacob sat in the lands where his father had lived. How many slanderers are there to a person from the day the Creator gives him a soul in this world? And because he came into the world, the evil inclination immediately appears to partake with him. As it is written, sin crouches at the door, for then the evil inclination partakes with him. How many 
awful and how many negative forces are after us every day. Why am I opening with that, Zohar? And how is that connect to the jumping into conclusion? So I'm jumping in now to the commentary, to the Sulam. So it say that from the moment we born, we born with a persecutor. We born with forces of negativity that the mission is to stop us from being successful. How fair is that? You born with a force. With a force that not allow you to make it. You born with a force that make you judge your friend that you love so much. You born with a force that make you jealous. That's a force we born with. Look at that. In the moment you have soul, you got a new friend, a bad friend. From the second you born, you have evil inclination that the mission is for you to make the wrong choices. You're going to make the wrong choice because there is a force out there to influence you to tell you you should judge that Yosef Atadik. Eh, he's snitching on his brother. He has ego. Eh, many times we do that. And we know what the Gemara say on that. It's written in the Gemara. The person who's suspicious of people who are perfect, Chaz Shalom can get sick in his body. I had Chaz Shalom because we all do that. But the Gemara doesn't say how to shalom. So if you're going through some pain or all this, that look at yourself. <clears throat> Who did you judge yesterday? Achoshet bekshirim, loke begufo. If you've been suspicious on people who try to do good, nobody can be perfect, but they do good. They try to do good, but you are achoshet by him. Be careful; he can get sick, or your family can get sick. How to shalom? So look, look into. Look into good because you don't see the whole picture. The evil inclination give you just a part. Is the part that you see is true? Yes, it is. But it's not the whole picture. It's not the whole picture. As it's written in the, when God uh, talked to Cain, and he's telling Cain, the, the, the evil inclination is the petach, is the beginning. It's always in the start. Starting in relationship, wait a little bit, give it a chance. Don't fight. Don't fight over what you go in the first six months. Those of you who are new into marriage, please, the first six months, even one year, even two years, it, if you are there to stay with one another, then what is two years? What is two years? Nothing. But if you are there just to try each other, it's never going to work because the beginning belongs to who? Very good. Yetzirah, evil inclination. Bore, shekenu. And this is the way to go. The beast or the animal, they're all running away from fire. That's a normal tendency of a of creature. We are not. We are not. Adam, no lad, ma, ma, nachnu. We want to jump into fire. Fire meaning like the evil inclination. So the evil inclination is like the Yetzirah. So what do we learn from here? And I hope, I'm not going to read the whole section. Uh, I just want you to understand that there is an important message for us. Many times, we are making decision based on the first impression. I know you cannot get a second chance to get the first impression, I agree. It's beautiful with the, what you're wearing, how you look, what you do, how you eat your food, how you sing your song, how you play your game, how you run your business, how you give your tithing. You know, people who don't give tithing, you know, you cannot, something is off there. Tithing is, is a basic. Everybody got to give tithing. You're a poor person in the street. So you judge people. You say, you give tithing today? So, well, I skipped that six months. Eh, there is a problem with that person. No different than stealing and killing. What do you mean you don't give? You got to give your tithing. It's not your money. So the idea is when we look into people and we understand that there is something wrong with them, you cannot jump into that conclusion. Your mission, your job, is to look to what's right about them. I know it's difficult, but there is a war going on with the Yetzirah. We're in a war. I tell you, there is a person that I met many, many years ago. You all heard of him, sure, of course. And he's Rabbi Karlibach. 
Rabbi Karlibach, one of the greatest individual who study from so many teachers, from the Admor of Babov, from the Rabbi of Lubavitch, you know, he studied in Lekwid Yeshiva. And his mission was to look at the good of everybody. I met him twice in my life. And usually when I go to Aram Nuchot, and the time permitted, I stop with my wife next to his grave. He's, he's buried above the Chida, not far. And it's a man that everybody loves. It changed the music, the Jewish music in the world. So I want to share with you a story of love of Rabbi Karlibach. I never heard this story before until one and a half hours ago. The story goes like that. Rav Karlibach is talking about the importance of mikveh. And he explained the mikveh, you know, in his lectures, he explained the mikveh. You know, what is a mikveh for men? I'm not talking about mikveh for women. What is the idea of the mikveh? You know, the whole idea of mikveh for men. And he explained, you know, that usually the Hasidim, you know, the Hasid, if, if you're part of Chabad, you, you want to do it every day. If you cannot do it every day, you want to do it uh, twice a week. If you cannot do it twice a week, you have to do it at least on Friday. Why Friday? Because if you get into Shabbat, you don't want to come to Shabbat with the garbage of the week. We all did some garbage during the week. But when you're coming in the front of the Creator on Shabbat with the greatest elevation, this is, this is it. You know, this is the elevation. This is Shabbat. You cannot go into Shabbat without doing mikveh. I'm not talking about mikveh. It's, it's, those of you who don't know what mikveh It's like a pool, pool of water. But it's not about purifying your body. Many people think that you go to mikveh to wash your body or take a shower or something like that. No. You take a shower before you're going into the mikveh. A good shower. And then you go into mikveh. Because the mikveh is a purification for your nefesh, for your soul. It's not a purification for the body. Purification for your soul. Meaning what? The body itself can be, get clean by the shower. But between the body and the soul, there is a bridge. That bridge is a soul and not a soul level. It's called nefesh. So when you're putting the nefesh into the pool in, of water, the pool of water is a special water. It's a mix of rainwater with regular water. Oh, well water and rainwater, which is perfect, like the Ari, Zal Mikveh, or Jerusalem Mikveh, Shiloach. But the rainwater is what makes it special. Mind Duchrim. And when you're going there, you get purified. Men need to do it at least minimum twice a week. Twice a week. Women usually do it during the time after the period, which is once a month. But men get affected more from negativity, whatever it is that you are around, that your job, work, talking to people, try to study Torah, get to fight. We get dirty with negative energy immediately. For that reason, men need to do a mikveh. So that's Rabbi Karlibach's introduction to mikveh. Now I'm, I'm going to jump into the story. So Rabbi Karlibach, wherever he go to, on Friday, he makes sure he does mikveh. That's what he's telling the story. So he's on the way to Texas. He has a show he needs to do after Shabbat. And he arrived there on Friday. And he started calling the shul. Do you have mikveh? Do you have mikveh? Do you have mikveh? And of course, you know, it was a certain place in Texas. You're not going to find a mikveh there for men. So he called. They actually said, yes, we do have a mikveh. So again, he drives to the area. And they say, you know, it's one of those areas. I don't know if you ever experienced when you arrive to a mikveh. And you know, nobody ever been there. And after you, never, nobody ever will get there. I don't know if you ever got that feeling. It happened to me in Columbus, Ohio. I arrived to Columbus, Ohio. And nobody ever used that mikveh. What a perfect mikveh. It's clean. It's neat. Shower. It's perfect mikveh. Perfect mikveh. Nobody ever used it. And you get the zechut. You get the merit to use the mikveh in Columbus, Ohio. And you elevate all the needs of thought, all the light that possible. The same thing happened to Rav Karlibach in his story. So he arrived to Texas, he arrived to the mikveh, and he thought to himself, I would be there alone, nobody ever arrived there. But as he uh, uh, arrived to the mikveh, he sees that there is another gentleman with a cowboy hat, because that's how people go there in Texas. And, you know, he was... Look at him, he doesn't look like the guy's into religion, Jewish religion or spirituality, but no judging, that's Rav Karlibach, continue. And uh, they start a conversation. And the guy with the cowboy hat, you know, look at Rav Karlibach and say, I'm sure you're asking, what is this guy doing here in the mikveh? You know, you come with a beer, you're a rabbi. And the rabbi said, no, Rav Karlibach said, no, but I'd love to hear your story, but I'm no, no judgment here at all. You know, I said to him, I want to tell you my story. And he said, 
I'm not into Shabbat all the time. I'm keeping Shabbat sometimes, sometimes I keep, sometimes I keep kosher, sometimes I don't keep kosher. I'm one of those people that on and off spiritually. But mikveh, I make sure I'm doing it on Friday. And the reason I'm doing it on, uh, on Friday, he said, he said to me, he said to Rav Karlibach, that my family come from the Vizhnitz Hasidim. The Vizhnitz Hasidim are from Romania. That's where they're from, from Romania. Between the border, between Romania and, and Ukraine. And he started telling him about the Rebbe of Vizhnitz. The Rebbe of Vizhnitz used to give lecture. When he used to give lecture, it was a lot of people. They were very passionate people. So they make sure that the kids will be under the table. All the kids used to listen to the lecture on that table. And the Rebbe used to take care of the kids on the table, get them the dessert, get them the food. But he used to hear the lecture as well. i make that long story short. It's a very long story. So he tells Rav Kalibar, he said to him, my father was a big Hasid of the Vizhnitz. And it was in Europe before we moved to Texas. And, uh, you know, he told me, I'm going to put you on the table and see what happened. The Vizhnitz Rav, the rabbi, look at him. And uh, he told them one thing that stay with him. He said, it doesn't matter how bad you fall. It doesn't matter how much negativity there is. You have to say to Hashem, you have to say to the Yetzirah, to the inclination, give me just five minutes without you. Give me five hours without you. Give me five months without you. And I will show you how close I am to Hashem. And uh, then he explained the vision. He explained that the way that we get five minutes away from negativity is for the men. Is from the mikveh. For the women, it's once once a month, of course. So through the mikveh, this is the break you're getting out of the of the negativity. So you look at Rav Karnibach and say, listen, I'm not always Shomer Shabbat. I'm not only kosher. But, you know, I cannot go into Shabbat without cleaning myself. I know this week I didn't do well. I know this week I didn't uh, give all the charity I'm supposed to give. I know this week I didn't give the tithing to the pennies and details. So before Shabbat, I come and I clean myself. And I find it to be beautiful. I don't know, the mikveh for men, you know, we move here to Upper East Side now, Manhattan, and there's not a lot of consciousness or awareness about mikveh. Men, usually, you know, there's no mikveh. What can we do? Hopefully, Hashem will help us to build one here so we can give that service to a lot of men. And hopefully, I can tell this story again and again to let men understand how important when you fight the evil inclination. This is the only way. But Hashem said, whatever you can do with mikveh for men, you cannot do it any pray. Can, can you imagine? The Arizal, Rabbi Isaac Luria said that through mikveh you can purify yourself. Not just in this world, also to the world to come. I mean, just, just get it. The, 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 the Admor of Chabad, all the Chabad movement, they say this is the only way you can get purified. Because you have to, you get a chance to restart. Otherwise, it's difficult. Rabbi Avraham Azula in his book, Chesed Lavram, right? That there is klipot around us, negative force around us, that we cannot shake them away. But to the person going to mikveh, it's like he go back to his mother womb, to Bina. And through that, when he get out of the mikveh, he's born again. I mean, it sounds like born again, but born again to become another human being. He give birth to himself. So what we learn from here, that the first solution for that yetzer ara, that evil inclination, is purification in the mikveh. Whatever the mikveh, if you live next to the ocean, you want to go to the ocean or river or whatever it is, or real mikveh. Why a real mikveh? Because within real mikveh there is otzarot, there is all kind of details that I cannot mention. How does that connect to our parasha, of course? Our parasha is all about how you deal with the evil inclination on a day-to-day. We are, we are fighting. We are in the middle of a war, my friend. And that war is not over. It's not a war that happened between Putin and Zelensky. It's not a war that's happening in Iran. It's not a war that's happening in the Middle East. It's not a war that's happening in Australia. It's not the war that happened in South America. It's an inner war, my friend, that every human being is going to that. And until, until we don't understand that there is actually a war, we're not even going to try to win it. Because we think the war is outside and we keep looking for outside. We, we wear better glasses so we can see that. But there is no glass to see that evil inclination within me that's fighting me. That's what happened with the brother. Tell us the Arizal in Likutet Torah. Likutet Torah, it says, Why do you want to kill him? Why do you want to kill yourself at Sadiq? So the Ari write like this. 
דרכי חשבו אחי יוסף is brandrefot שהוא שיריים מהקליפה is the left over of the קליפה שנפרדה מאברהם ויצחק then it's left over from אברהם ויצחק why would they say that? למה? למה חשבו שהוא כזה? why they thought he's like that? ומה שהביא דיבתם רעה is spoke לשון הרע on the brother a spiritual person don't talk like that about the brother ו- היפוך השלום, it's the opposite of peace. When you speak bad about another human being, מוציא דיבה לחברו, speak bad about people behind your back, it's not just לשון הרע, it's דיבה. And when you do דיבה, when you do דיבה, לשון הרע, then you cannot be a tzaddik, you cannot be part of the Yaakov family from the Israelite. We don't do that, we, we're looking for peace, we're looking for unity. And then he told Uh, that they're only looking for girls. He spoke very bad about them. Now they all were perfect tzaddikim. They were righteous, perfect. So when they come together to get rid of Yosef, now the story changed, right? They want to get rid of that guy. It's like, let's get rid of that evil brother we have. There were union between them. The unity was perfect. They're not into any girls. They're into mitzvot. They're into spirituality. All of a sudden, the guy speak bad about them. Then he speak bad about b'nei ha'shfachot, the concubines, children. This guy has to get out. Out is negative. So they couldn't see it. Sometimes in life, my friend, we cannot see the whole truth. You cannot. Especially when it's positive about the other person. You know, you cannot see the whole truth about negative. We're always searching for what's wrong with that picture. That's when we're insecure. That's when we're living in lack. That's when we don't trust Hashem. But if you're capable, like Rav Karlibach, to look within the good, like Rav Zusha, To look within the good, the other person, Rabbi Levi Yitzchak Biberdisho Ben Sarah Sasha, to look at the good within the person. Oh my God. You are powerful. You are strong. Why you are strong? Because we are in a war with the Yetzerara. Somebody is injected lack of unity into the group. Find one good thing about them. Somebody hate the group, find one good things about them. Somebody you feel they use your money, find the one good things about them. It's, it's obvious to see the bad. Why? Why did I just read from the Zohar? Who is coming first? Yetzerah tov or Yetzerah ra? The good inclination or the bad inclination? The bad. So the first thought come to your head will have to come from the bad. <laughs> It has to. That's how the bad inclination work. Yes, sir, uh, that's how we work. So, what do we do? Make sure we understand. What is the other thing? So, Admor of Chabad wrote many books. One of the Balatanya, I'm talking about Balatanya. There is a book that's called Igeret Atshuva. It's in English too. You can find it everywhere. Igeret Atshuva in chapter 12. Igeret Atshuva in chapter 12 explained that there is Another thing you're going to do before mikveh and after mikveh. And Igeret HaTshuva said, if you want to get rid of the evil inclination, many times, because Hashem want to give you a gift, He will send you some pain. Some emotional pain, some physical pain, some business pain, things that are not going to work for you. He called it miruk avonot. Miruk is like when you shine a copper. I don't know how many of you ever work with copper. So when you shine it, every pain that you go through, if you will understand that that is there, it was designed to remove the evil inclination from you, you will no longer look at pain in a negative way. Very similar to the story of the Rashash. Rabbi Shalom Sharabi. A gentleman came to Rabbi Shalom Sharabi to tell him how bad his life is. The Rashash was with another in person. The wife of Rabbi the Rashash, the famous Kabbalist from Yemen, brought him some cookies and tea so he can wait for her husband for an answer. In the meantime, he's thinking what to talk to the rabbi. He's a, he's a Kabbalist. He wants to talk to him all the life suffering, lack of money, problem. And he falls asleep. As he falls asleep, in his dream, he sees something incredible. What does he see? He sees that there is... Basically, everybody running toward the center of town. And there is different kind of wagon passing by. One wagon is white. Other wagon is black. Some wagon is gray. 
So he's running with the people toward the center of town. You want to know what's going on? She asked the people as he's running, what, 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 where are we going? What's going on? So oh, they 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 going to judge. Uh, There's a big judgment day for uh, the person called David Alevi. He looked at them and said to them, my name is David Alevi. That's, 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 that's my name. So yes, that's a judgment for David Alevi. So what's with all the wagon, the black, the white? So oh, I said, the, the black is all the sin it did. The, 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 the white is all the good things did. So okay, the, 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 it's in almost even it looked like more dark wagon with a lot of creature in it. They said, they said, they said oh, yes, those creature is always negative action and those creature are not white. There's uh, all the positive. And he started to be worried. He said, well, I see there is more black than white. I mean, then the creature in the white are kind of small and the creature in the black are kind of big. So he's sitting there and they, there is in the middle of the center of town, there's a scale. And they start putting everything on the scale and you can see obviously that the, 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 the people coming out from the black wagon with the negative action is kind of weight much more than the white kind of Angel created from the positive thing, and he started to be worried. And at that moment, is the announcer go? Is anybody else want to talk about David Levy complain or anything like that? And he's like, at that time, he starts shaking. And he said, now I would like to invite the announcer. Say, I would like to invite all the pain and suffering that person went through in his life. And then some wagon start coming, and so all the gray wagon with a great creature like angels. And they, he said, now we're going to add them into the white because every time he went through a pain, it's as if he did something positive. And all of a sudden, the scale almost get even. At that point, the gentleman waiting for the rashash, waking up and screaming, give me more pain, give me more suffering. Of course, at that moment, he look up and he see the rashash just has been ready to talk to him with his wife. They were worried about it because he was sweating and screaming. He said, are you okay? He said, I'm okay. He say, Kvod Arav, thank you, Kabbalist. He kissed his hand like he's supposed to do by Allah. He kissed the right hand of the rabbi. And then he said, Rabbi, just give me blessing never to forget what I saw in my dream because I understood that every pain we're going through is to remove my negativity from my life. Whatever it is, Mikveh, you do. Whatever it is, pain you're going through, don't hate your pain. That pain you're going through is sometimes you didn't have the chance to do a mikvah. You didn't have a chance to purify your mind. You didn't have a chance to purify your talk, your conversation. You didn't have a, a chance to purify your action. Then pain is coming. So that will be clean as if mikvah is cleaning you. Now, one of the thing, I mean, now I'm going to jump into another thing. What is the evil inclination can basically attack you? What, what? What can put us to sleep with the evil inclination? I mean, the normal thing, you're not going to kill, you're not going to steal. That's the obvious. You know, speaking bad about your friend, we're going to try to do the best we can. Nobody's going to be perfect, but we're going to try. But there is one thing that according to the Chachamim, according to the sages, is one thing that we all do, and we're not aware that this is actually, it's called the Oraita. It's a serious thing. And you know what it is, my friend? It's a very simple thing where the evil inclination is fooling us every day. It's called Nedarim Veshvot. When we promise something and we don't do it. What's such a big deal about it? Why Rosh Hashanah is to start with Kol Nidre? Yom Kippur. I mean, Atarat Nedarim Rosh Hashanah, Kol Nidre, Yom Kippur. All about Nedarim, all about promises, promises, promises. Because when you promise something, you have to deliver. If you promise something and you don't deliver, you just get credit for what you promise. But it is like a, a vacuum. It's like an empty vessel. Those empty vessels never stay empty. They get fulfilled with clipot, with more negativity, with more evil inclination. And that evil inclination eventually fool you, makes you have lust and jealousy and anger and everything else that you try to change. So instead of trying to change it, let's stop promising things. Let's stop say. Of course I will do it. Of course I will buy it. I will be there for you. Don't worry, buddy. I will be there. Why? Why? Simply neither. I'm not promised, but that's my intention to do. You promise to give charity. Hey, shh, slow down. You promise to buy a Torah. You promise to buy a tefillin for someone. You promise to do whatever it is. One of the tradition in um, my family, not to fall asleep in Avonot, Nedarim Veshvot, that the Yetzirah would not fool us. 
Ah, oh, my kids don't. And uh, uh, we all do that. Let's say if we promise to do something in a synagogue to buy Aliyah. So let's say the Aliyah costs three hundred and twenty dollars. And I'm worried. What happens if I cannot write it on Shabbat? I'm keeping Shabbat. I cannot write it with a pen. Usually, when I move my watch from one side to another, so it will remind me. Never take it off. Only after Shabbat, after I pay, I pay that. So when people see me that I'm a little bit too serious about it, so what do you mean too serious? This is where the evil inclination falling. I said, remember, this week portion is a cure for the evil inclination. What does the evil inclination want? Vayeshev. What is Vayeshev? Settle down. What does the evil inclination want you to do? To fall asleep. Where do you fall asleep? With promising. What does the evil inclination do to us to forget about the mikveh? Why? Because it makes you say to yourself, come on, come on, Eliyahu. You want to tell me in five minutes you're going to make yourself wet in the pool, you're going to be purified? Yes, I will, say to him. Yes, I will. That's the technology of the mikveh. Yes, I will. You want to tell me that by a little bit pain and suffering, uh, negativity will go away from your life? Yes, it will. Make sure you know what you're dealing with. And you know what? Maybe it's time to read to you a section from the Zohar that I found uh, in this week, Parsha. It's in Resh Yud in the Sulam. Those of you who have the Sulam. It's in uh, uh, Kuf Peitet Amud Aleph. Kuf Peitet Amud Aleph in the end of Amud Aleph. Uh, in the beginning of Amud Bet. Kuf Peitet Amud Bet. So it's in the end of Amud Aleph, Kuf Peitet. So, and Debbie will read it first. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, explain it. See how one should be wary of one's sins and go by our corrected path so as to not be fooled by the evil inclination, which slanders him every single day, because it always slanders him. One should overcome it and prevail over it in a solid place where the evil inclination will not be able to move him from his place. This is because one must be stronger than it and connect at the place of strength. When man overcomes it, he is on the side of strength and clings to that side to green strength. And because the evil inclination is strong, man should be stronger. Hence, those people who overcome it are called mighty in strength, since they are with their own kind. Because they had overcome a strong one, they have become as strong as it is. And these are the angels of the Creator, the righteous ones that come from the side of harsh kvura, strength, to overcome the evil inclination. And they are called mighty in strength who fulfill his word. Bless the Lord, you his angels, meaning righteous ones such as Joseph, who is called righteous and strong, who kept the holy covenant that was written in him. So you say, Rabbi Chia, Padach Lama, Rabbi Chia opened the discussion and said, what does he say? A person needs to be careful how is he go on a spiritual journey. Spiritual journey has two paths. One path is to do good. Second path is to prevent yourself from doing bad. That's it. That's spirituality. Why we have to be careful from negativity so bad? The negativity, the evil inclination, that's Yetzerara, that's dark force, is there to all day long speak bad behind your back. You want to know who speak bad behind your back? That evil inclination. You want to know who need friend to, to who need another friend to talk bad about his friend? The evil inclination is convincing you to talk bad about other people, to think bad about other people, to judge people. If you take away the SRR from you, the negative angel from your soul, you're never gonna see the bad about other human beings. After all, all humanity was created by the creator. We're going down. When we start to believe that the Yetzirah is real. But the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, was created by God. Why? To give us a chance of a free will. To give us a chance of choice. If there will be no negative and positive, how can you choose? That's a purpose. So don't hate that negative part creation of, of God. It's just there to elevate us. To take us from one point to another. That's what the evil inclination is there for. Which is unbelievable. But in the other end, don't think that that entity, that force is, is not part of God. It is part of God. It's not God, but it's there to help you grow. So every time you win it, you grow. Let's read how. All the time they speak behind your back, that evil thing. 
for that reason, say the Zohar, Reshud Aleph, Tzarich Adam Lidgaber Alav, a person has to overcome that. Velalot Alav Bemakum Mutzak. It's a weird words. I never saw it in any section in the Zohar. Makum Mutzak. You know what Mutzak mean? Mutzak is like 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 cement, like stone, solid, something solid. We have to be something solid. Shetzar Alu Yichol Azizu Bemkomo. You have to be like a cement, like a mountain. The, the evil inclination will come to you and say, listen, I heard that that person talked behind your back. I heard him. You should hate him. You have the amutzeket. You are like, you are like a cement. You cannot move my opinion. And mitchaber b'mkom ha-gvura. I say from Kabbalah point of view, you have to be in gvura. Gvura means gibor. Gibor means strong. Brave. Mishum shikashir adam mitchaber ala. When a person is gvura mitchaber, overcome. The, the dark side. When you're finding the, the evil inclination, I'm going to put meditation here. You put the name Kufresh Ein Sint Nun Beshva. Why Beshva? Beshva is the vowels for Gvura. Kufresh Ein Sint Nun is the secret of the left column as well. So when you are fighting the evil inclination, always Kufresh Ein Sint Nun, that's the code, that's a meditation. When you're fighting it, when you start being very negative about yourself or about others, because the evil inclination always will tell you, come on, I know how bad you are for the last 28 years. You want to tell me with one mikveh, you're going to be tzaddik, yes, I will. You want to tell me with one pain, you're going to be tzaddik, yes, I will. If you're going to see the good and the chance for yourself, you know what's going to happen next? When you see your friend going through a tough time, <laughs> And he's doing the worst thing a human being can do. You can tell him there is a chance. There is hope. Join me for the mikvah for five minutes. Join me for study a little bit of Torah. No problem. There is hope for you. The evil inclination is gibor. He's strong. He's brave. But you have to be stronger and braver than the... So for that reason, we call all the people who overcome him, Giborei Koah. They are the strong, they come from Gvura. They know Tzadikim. That's why we call righteous. They overcome, like Yosef HaTzadik, overcome the temptation. This week, Pasha, toward his master's wife, who tempted him every day. That's why he was Tzadik. He wasn't Tzadik because he was, uh, I don't know, going around and talking about the words of God. Tzadik come from action. What did you overcome lately? What did you overcome lately? What, what, what kind of fight you're dealing with? What kind of yetzerara you have? What type of yetzerara? You know, when I used to teach in a 12-step group in different rehab center, it's beautiful to see those soul. Ah, oh, they're so open after they fell down to the ground. They know they have a war. They know they have a fight. But they know one thing. They cannot do it themselves. So they join a group of 30 people, 40 people. They talk and they have a discussion together. One say I'm suffering from anger. One say I'm suffering from cocaine. One say I'm suffering from uh, sex addiction. One say I'm suffering from uh, 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 cigarette, wine. In the end of the day, they're all fighting the same enemy. So when you join a group and you admit, like we say in the first step of 12 step, admit, you got a problem. You go to the hospital, admission. You admit yourself that you're sick. Then they let you in. Everything is to get to understand, okay, I got punched really bad by the negative side. Now I know it's not my friend. That's good news. Now let's work on that. When you work on it together, that's why when you get 10 men together praying, why 10? Because every one of them is a different aspect of the Sfirot. One man, Keter. The other man, Hesed. We all one. Together, and we know that pray today, we're all together. We understand what the Yetzirah did to us. We know what the negative force did to us. We are in it together, and we're going we're gonna to fight, and we're going to win. We're going to be Gibor Echail. And for that reason, for that reason, say, tell us the Zohar, that Yosef HaTzadik, because he overcome, I mean, Yosef is the son of Yaakov. That's not enough. Well, you want to be the son of Yaakov. I want to be the son of Yaakov. What could be better than that? You're the son of Yaakov. That's your teacher. That's, that's the guy who guides you. Could not be better than that. No. Yosef was the son of Yaakov. That was a gift. But what did he achieve? 
It was only at that moment. That's when he became a king, my friend. That's what, and you know what was the reward for that? Go to prison. Because they overcome, go to prison. Why? Because the evil inclination want to fool you to make you mitya'esh. You know what? Mitya'esh, yeush. To make you depressed on your achievement. So you just achieve the greatest gift of your entire life in a young age. And you know what the, what the evil inclination will do to you? Push you to prison for 20 years so you maybe have some doubts that what you did was right. When you do the right thing, Please believe you did the right thing. When you do the right thing, please believe yourself it's the right thing. Don't doubt yourself after that. You help a lady, you help a couples, you help a rabbi. Whatever you did, it is the right thing to do. Now, after that, will come prison of yourself. Don't let the evil inclination make you depressed over what you did. Now, to summarize, I would like you, each one of you this week, to recognize your evil inclination. Where is he attacking you the most? Is it your jealousy? Is it lust? Is it speaking bad behind people? Is it like you like to promise people things so they will like you, so it's approval? How is he fooling you? Just recognize where is he attacking you? That force will attack you. If you're not being attacked by the evil inclination, something is either you're lying or you not belong here. You have to get attacked all day long with the evil inclination. As higher as you get spiritually, as more powerful will be the attack by the evil inclination. This week, parasha is all about us winning, my friend. It's all of us becoming like Yosef, that we become kings and queens. This is the week to become the kings and queen before Hanukkah. You become the kings and queen, but there is a requirement. What is the one thing which is difficult for me to do, and I would like to overcome it? Now, if you have 10 bad things that you cannot overcome, Choose one of them. Don't do all the ten together. If you do the all ten together, that's when he fool you again. Because you know you're not going to make it. And you're going to give up. And then you're going to fall apart. Don't do a big thing. Take a small thing. Whatever it is. And make sure that this one thing has to do with your thought. Not with your words. And not with your action only. With the mind. What are you thinking here? Help the mind. Then it help the words. Then it help the action. Thank you for listening. And have a great week. Mm-hmm.